You guys, I am so proud of myself that I actually managed to stick with my puzzle tracker spreadsheet for the entirety of last year. So now I have so much data. So before I get into it, I want you to go down to the comments and I want you to guess how many puzzles do you think I did last year? And how many pieces do you think I put together last year? All right, everyone back, everyone made their guesses. Well then, let's jump into the spreadsheet. Cyberspace, what's that? The world inside computers. Okay, I believe I'm recording my screen. If I'm not, and I have to redo this, I'm going to be uh, very annoyed and might not finish this video. <laughs> I think it's working. I think we'll be fine. Okay, so we're gonna subtract one because this first row is just the titles. But then if we scroll all the way down, I solved 121 puzzles last year. Now, I feel like that's not actually that many, and I have a theory for why that is. So last year I did two sponsorships for diamond painting, and I finished both of those diamond paintings, which was not actually required for the sponsorship, but I spent like two months each on those. And so all the time at night after I'm done working that I otherwise would have spent doing a puzzle for fun, I spent working on those diamond paintings. And you're gonna see at the end when I show you the 2023 spreadsheet so far, now that I'm not in the middle of a diamond painting, I am doing so many more puzzles. Okay, so now if I highlight all of these uh, piece count numbers, we should get a total. So the total number of pieces is 101,402. And I did a 1500 piece puzzle on New Year's Eve. So that's the one that bumped me just over 100,000. All right, it is 10.13 and I have officially completed this puzzle by midnight. So I made the 2022 spreadsheet. So last year was the first time that I was keeping a puzzle um, tracker spreadsheet like this. So I didn't want to have too many columns because I was afraid if I made it too complicated, I would get overwhelmed or I would get bored or I would just stop using it. So I kept it really simple. For the one that I'm keeping this year, I did add in a few more columns. So I'll get to that at the end of the video. But last year, literally all that I tracked was the name, the brand, the date started, the date finished, the piece count, where I got it from, what I did it for, and my rating out of five. So I thought it would be fun if I gathered images of every single one of these puzzles and put them in a graphic together. Uh, it turned out not to be fun. It turned out to be very time consuming, but here it is. This is my 2022 year in puzzles. And before I get into all of the charts from the spreadsheet, I have a few other stats to share with you. I mean, I'm good at math. I understand math. Nothing in math class could mess me up. So if we assume that every puzzle piece is an average of two millimeters thick, and we stacked up all 101,402 pieces, one on top of the other, it would be 202,804 millimeters tall. That's equivalent to about 665 feet which is more than two Statues of Liberties stacked on top of each other. That's also taller than the Washington Monument and the Space Needle. So now let's say that the average puzzle piece is about 0.7 inches on each side. So if you lined them all up end to end, it would be 70,981 inches long. That is just over a mile of puzzle pieces. That's a lot of information to get in 30 seconds. <laughs> 
Anyway, okay, let's go through some of these charts which my sister put together for me in this spreadsheet. So here you can see uh, highlighted green are all of the days that I worked on a jigsaw puzzle. You can see that I do a lot of puzzling on the weekends. Look at this, almost every single Sunday of the year I worked on a jigsaw puzzle. Now we can look at how it breaks down by brand. So the brand that I did the most of was Ravensburger. I did 25 Ravensburger puzzles. And that makes sense since I did all of those world's puzzles. I also did a bunch around nationals to prepare for nationals and then at the event. The second company is Eboo. They are so generous. They send me so many puzzles. I literally just got another box of... I think seven Ibu puzzles. So they're all the way up there just because I love their puzzles and I have so many of them available for me to solve. After that is Soonness and I do feel a little bit bad sometimes because her puzzles are very expensive. So it's definitely not realistic to expect everyone to spend that much money on all of their puzzles. But she has been generous enough to send them to me for free and they are just so beautiful that I just love putting them together. After that, I did six piecework puzzles. Again, they're super generous. They've sent me so many puzzles. And they're the ones who I used to have their boxes featured in the background of like every single one of my videos last year. Then I did five from Cloudberries, which actually seems kind of low. Um, Cloudberries didn't send me that many puzzles last year. Then we have four from Bits and Pieces, a four from Springbok, and then a handful of different companies I did one, two, or three from. So this next chart shows us the breakdown of piece counts. So if we start from this darker blue up here, I did one puzzle each that were um, under 500 pieces and all these various piece counts. The 499 is Simone Yetch's puzzle, which is intentionally missing a piece. <laughs> So I did 45 500 piece puzzles, then I did a handful here in the middle, and then I did 52 1000 piece puzzles. After that, I did two 1500 piece puzzles. I did two 3000 piece puzzles, although it's actually my own puzzle, which I solved two separate times. And then one 9000 piece puzzle, which was the Minions puzzle. And I know that a lot of puzzles actually have a little bit more than the piece count that's on the box. Like the Ibu puzzles are actually 1,008 pieces. I decided for the ease of my spreadsheet, I would just go with the piece count that is on the box. Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> so almost three quarters of the puzzles I solved last year were gifted to me directly from the puzzle companies. And I just want to acknowledge how lucky and privileged I am to be in that position. I never thought that would be a thing. Like you guys remember at the very beginning of this channel, how excited I got every single time I got something gifted to me from a puzzle company. So after that huge section, I did eight puzzles that I bought for myself with my own money. Um, six that were sent in from a viewer, five that were given to me as a Christmas gift, four, only four that I bought off of eBay. I buy so many puzzles off of eBay. I can't believe I only actually solved four of them last year. How did that happen? <laughs> um, anyway, then we have the estate sales, um, puzzle swaps, and then a few random places. So next is the percentage of what I did the puzzles for. So a little bit more than half of them I did just for fun. I actually love seeing that. <laughs> um, these I would take Instagram photos of or show in my Instagram story, but I'm not making a full YouTube video out of them. So then we have uh, 32 puzzles that I did make a video out of. Uh, we have eight puzzles that I did as competition training. Uh, five, okay, so the freelance project. Um, at the beginning of last year, I used to uh, photograph Ravensburger puzzles and for them to use those photos in their own social media accounts. Um, I've pretty much 
stopped doing that, but I was still doing it a little bit at the beginning of last year. Then we have the four from uh, Nationals and three for a Patreon video and two for a sponsored video portion. So that was the, um, the Puzzle You ad read where I had to do the, the two custom puzzles. Maybe next year I'll have to break out uh, sponsored videos from videos I'm doing just because. Uh, that might be interesting to know the breakdown of. Okay, so then we have uh, the breakdown by rating. And I actually think, yeah, this is the better chart for that one. So I gave four puzzles, two stars. Uh, most of them got either three or four stars and then 15 puzzles got five stars. So in just a sec, I'll go back to the um, first spreadsheet and we'll go through the worst and the best of the year. But we have just one more pie chart and this is uh, that I did two thirds of the puzzle where I started and finished it all in one day. And then about one third of the puzzles, it took me more than one day to finish them. Even though honestly, she's the worst. She's the worst person in the world. All right, back to the beginning. So now I'm gonna go through all of my two star puzzles and five star puzzles. I didn't give any puzzles one star. Nothing I did last year was that bad. Um, you would really have to be at like, catch up puzzle levels of bad to get one star. So the first one I gave two stars to was the Jigsaw Jigsaw. And this is so tough because the concept was incredible. The execution and the puzzle quality was really bad. So how do you rate that? So I've come up with a solution for uh, this current year's spreadsheet, which I'll get to in just a sec. Uh, the next one I rated two stars was this Peter Pan puzzle from Seiko. So when I was visiting Katie over the summer, we bought a couple puzzles at Target uh, just to practice for uh, the puzzle competitions. And this one from Seiko, uh, it was a Thomas Kincaid puzzle. We hated the illustration style. We just did not enjoy this puzzle. And then, ooh, okay, now I feel bad that I gave a Ravensburger puzzle two stars, but it was the Pears puzzle, the Bali rice fields. I just thought the picture was so boring and the bottom half was so dark. <laughs> like I'm gonna keep it because I did it at nationals, which was an exciting event, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna solve that one again. <laughs> Maybe I'll break it out again when I'm training for worlds. And then right at the end of the year, I did this puzzle, which uh, I had gotten at the estate sale. Someone just like handed it to me and I didn't really want it, but I figured I would solve it anyway, just so that I could give it away. And uh, it's from Suns Out, it's called Mailbox Treasures. The quality wasn't good, the picture wasn't good. I just did not enjoy that one. And then if we look at what I gave five stars to, so we have Playing With The Past by Apostrophe Puzzles. I loved the illustration, loved the puzzle quality, loved the box design. I had, there, I had no critiques on this puzzle. The next one was Flat Banana from Springbok. I have an entire video all about that puzzle. Then we have the Colorful Lazels puzzle, which was truly a piece of art, loved that one. Then we have Marching Spring from Soonness. I know it's expensive, but this illustration was perfect for a puzzle. The box is so well designed and the puzzle quality is A+. Then we've got Tessellate from Puzzle Love, which was a new brand that uh, just started last year, but I loved this illustration, super fun. Uh, we've got Chromatic from Cloudberries. Um, I think I talked about this one in a video or on Instagram or something, but I uh, yeah, loved this illustration. Uh, Prismatic from Springbok. Again, I did a whole video about that one. Such a beautiful puzzle. And I also gave five stars to, uh, to both of the other round puzzles that I got in that estate sale haul. These round Springbok puzzles from like the 60s and the 70s just the most beautiful puzzles you'll ever see. So then of course I gave five stars to my own puzzle. <laughs> um, I also did a Puzzle Michelle Wilson puzzle, which is like a hand cut wood puzzle, which comes all the way from a company in France. 
so beautiful. I love all of their puzzles. Um, I gave five stars to the um, individual nationals puzzle, the one that I got second place on. <laughs> and then this is just me doing my own puzzle again. So again, I still gave it five stars. Then I finally solved the gradient crypt, which I used in my own puzzle. All of these individual puzzle pieces are from the gradient crypt puzzle. Um, I actually solved that for a video, which I filmed at the end of last year and got a little bit delayed, but you're going to see it in a video very soon. And then the last one is Puzzles Plus from Eaton. Again, I love the design and the old puzzle um, like quality is just totally unmatched. All right, so I think that is everything from last year. So now let's take a look at the 2023 spreadsheet. Winston, do we do we think now is really the right time to be starting a, a puzzle? <laughs> yeah, I'm great at puzzles. You're a born puzzler, Winston. So already I have been puzzling so much more than I was last year. Um, it is January 17th when I'm filming this, and I've already done 15 puzzles. <laughs> So again, I have the puzzle title, the brand, the date started, and the date finished, but I added this extra column for dates worked so that if a puzzle takes me more than two days, I can just list off each of the dates that I worked on it. And then if I take a day off in the middle, I have that data and it's recorded instead of just having a start date and an end date. Then we've got the piece count, where from, what for, that's all the same. But then we have four different rating columns. So I wanted to break it out into a difficulty rating, an enjoyment rating, a puzzle quality rating, and an overall rating. So this way, if a puzzle is you know, really difficult and I don't enjoy it very much, but it is good quality, all of those different aspects can be reflected in my rating. Or if I really enjoy the concept of a puzzle, but the quality isn't quite there, um, again, I have that broken out. And also this time I'm rating out of 10 instead of out of five. Um, just so I have a little more wiggle room in my responses. So then I just added a tab for whether something is uh, vintage or modern. I have a tab for if I worked on it with other people, since I'm going to so many competitions this year where you're doing pairs and teams, I wanna be able to record that. And then I have uh, the time. So this is only if I'm timing myself doing the puzzle. Um, if I am, then I'll just note my time right in here. All the puzzles I do for fun, I don't time myself because it just adds more stress. So um, I just don't have that data for most of the puzzles. So everything over here, uh, that's all something that Katie added so that we could make the charts later on. <laughs> so then I actually have a second tab called the calendar tab. And we wrote out every single date of the entire year. And then I can write the title of the puzzle that I worked on on that day. So it's basically the same data as date started, dates worked, and date finished, only it's broken out in a slightly different way. And you can see whenever I worked on multiple puzzles all in the same day. So for example, I'm doing another sponsored clip with Puzzle U. So I worked on these custom puzzles on the 12th, but the one that I'm really featuring in the video, I got halfway done off camera. And then just today I filmed that sponsored clip and I finished it on camera. So I wanted a way to be able to note that in my spreadsheet. So I know that a lot of people track their puzzles in a lot of different ways. Um, I know that, oh my God, what's that company called? Um, Airtable. I know that Airtable is a very popular spreadsheet program that people will use for this sort of thing. I personally, I like to keep it simple. I'm happy with Google Sheets. So if you want this exact template, um, obviously you could recreate it yourself. It would not be that hard. But if you want it ready made for you, I will have that on my Patreon this week. So I would love to know in a comment if you kept track of your puzzles last year, how many did you solve? How do your stats compare to mine? Your code word for the comments will be spreadsheet. 
And I've gotten a few questions lately asking what the code word is for. It is just to give me a little heads up that you watched all the way to the end of the video so that I can give your comment a little extra love. So stay tuned because I have some really cool puzzles coming up very soon on this channel. And I think that's it for today. I'll see you all in the next one.